Chicken piccata is generally a chicken breast, flattened out, floured, and fried with a pan sauce based on lemon, butter, parsley, and sometimes capers. The capers are the best part, IMHO. Rather than having it with pasta, I figured out a good way of doing it with little faux noodles of asparagus. Asparagus is amazing with these flavors anyway, and we save some calories here that we can spend on more butter. First thing is to peel and chop a few garlic cloves and a couple of shallots or one big one like this, roughly chop. I like to see some big chunkies in the sauce and the garlic be less likely to burn if it isn't super fine. Push that to the side. A standard one pound bunch of asparagus, the king of all green vegetables in my book. And you don't want any of that woody part of the stem for this. I'm feeling some resistance there, so I'm going to trim even higher up. These are not terribly fresh, unfortunately. Here's the best slicing method I've found. Slice one very thin noodle off the asparagus, and now it has a flat surface that you can roll it onto. Super stable. And from here, I can get three more super thin slices. If you have thicker asparagus, Asparagus, obviously you can get more than that. A little slice off the side, roller, and nice and stable, three more slices, as thin as I can get them. This is a little painstaking, but it's the only time-consuming part of this recipe, and you certainly don't have to be perfect with each cut done. And while we're here, I'll slice my lemon in half. Time for the chicken. One big breast like that should be enough for two people. I'm making two portions. Got to get it thinner, and you could slice it into several thin medallions, but today I'm slicing the whole thing vertically in half. I just do that with my head down low on the counter so I can see from the side if I'm getting it even. Not bad. I don't think you need to pound it super flat like a schnitzel, really just the thick part at the top so it'll cook more evenly with the thin tail. Yes, I'm pounding this with a pint glass. That works fine. The force that it would take to shatter this against the meat would also send meat flying across the room. You're just not going to do it. Okay, I'll get my widest pan, a generous coating of olive oil in there, and heat on medium. And I'll get everything else handy because once we start, this is going to go super quick. I like some chili flake and capers. I like these big ones from Spain, and then you'll need a fork to reach in and lift them out of their brine. Gotta have some butter handy for the sauce and a knife to cut it with, and water. Some people use chicken stock, I think water is fine. Actually, let me move all of that away because this chicken gon' splatter. Enough pepper and salt for both sides of the chicken, and then a little handful of flour, toss that around, and now I only have to wash my hand once. And if you don't want the carbs, you could skip the flour, or you could use almond flour, that works great, just use a little lower heat, or make some room in your daily carb budget by eating the sponsor of of this video for breakfast, Magic Spoon Cereal. Let's thank them real quick. Magic Spoon has the exact same flavor as your favorite cereals, and yet there's zero grams of sugar, four or five net carbs depending on the flavor, and a ton of protein. How is this possible? Look at the ingredients. There's no grain. It's mostly milk protein. Yo, dog, I heard you like milk, so I got you some milk for your milk. The new cinnamon flavor is exactly the taste of my childhood, but they also have cocoa, fruity, frosted, blueberry, peanut butter, and special flavors they drop all the time. Magic Spoon has a 100% happiness guarantee. If you don't like it, you can get your money back, no problem, but you're going to like it. Check my link in the description and use my code Ragusea for $5 off. They ship to Canada now, too. Magicspoon.com slash Ragusea for 5 bucks off your box. Thank you, Magic Spoon. Now, lay that chicken in the hot oil. Bigger piece first. There's always a slightly bigger piece. If you're nervous about sticking, you can kind of slide it around for the first few seconds. Some people straight up breadcrumb and deep fry chicken piccata. I think that just turns it into a schnitzel. That little bit of flour just enhances browning and clings better to the sauce later. Whoops, my heat is a little bit too high. I'll knock that back a little bit. Gotta make sure I don't burn any of the fond at the bottom of the pan because we're making a pan sauce in here in a minute. I'm looking for these to hit 160 Fahrenheit, 70 C in the thick part there. It'll cook the rest of the way while it sits on the board. The thicker one needed a few more seconds. That was about six minutes total. And now in goes the garlic, shallots, and asparagus. I'm doing my vegetable side and my sauce at exactly the same time. And I'll give them as much dry heat as I can before I'm worried that either the garlic or the fond is going to burn. And at that point, I'll deglaze with water and turn the heat up to high. Once the pan is wet, nothing can burn as long as you keep moving everything. Got to keep the asparagus moving to cook it evenly. And if the pan is ever looking dry, more water. Again, people use stock, you can do that. Now I can start dropping in my other ingredients, my capers, between the salt in the chicken and the brine that's still clinging to these capers, I'm probably not gonna need any more salt in the dish. Some chili flake, highly optional, stir, stir, gotta keep the asparagus rotating around. And then the lemon juice, just passing it through my fingers to catch any seeds. You might start with half a lemon for two portions. I'm doing the whole lemon because, well, you know, you can always squeeze more at the table. Alrighty, when the asparagus is just starting to look floppy and noodly, it's time to turn the heat off. The bubbling has to pretty much stop before we can put in the butter. A little more water there. I gotta make more sauce than it seems like we need because the sauce is for the asparagus and for the chicken. Drop in as much butter as your belief system
system will permit and stir to emulsify. You should see the sauce noticeably thicken. If it doesn't, add more butter. I'll taste for seasoning. Yeah, no more salt. But then again, I was also using salted butter. Now, this is important. Rather than dumping the asparagus onto the plate, I'm lifting it out. I want to leave most of the sauce behind in the pan. That's looking a little army green, but don't stress. We're going to fix that by returning the pan to the warm burner and tearing in a whole ton of parsley. Nice, bright green. If you want to pre-slice your chicken, now would be a great time, and you can lift that onto the veg and coat everything in sauce. Yeah, that's nice, but I think my sauce is a little runny. More butter. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Super glossy. The magic emulsifying power of butter. Piquant, I believe, is the perfect word to describe that sauce, though I have no idea how to pronounce it. Piquant? Piquant? Picante? No idea, but this good.